Task Us On Air presents CX Plus You. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Task Us On Air. I'm Brett Ransom. With me today, I have Siva Ragava, and welcome to CX Plus You, the most ridiculously refreshing podcast on all things outsourcing. So today, our topic is trust and safety, and the, and the title of our podcast today is Protecting Platforms from Adversarial Content with Generative AI. So in the next 15 minutes, we're going to explore a hot topic, and Siva is going to take us through his perspective on trust and safety as it relates to generative AI. And we'll talk through a lot of topics about where the industry's at, some of the risks that companies should consider, uh, where Taskus fits into this, and a host of other topics. So let's get started. I'm Brett Ransom. I'm Vice President of Sales at Taskus. And Siva, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, all. Uh, my name is Siva. Uh, I lead the trust and safety practice at Taskus. I'm the uh, senior director here, and I've been in the trust and safety space for over 15 years. Spent a lot of time both on the AI as well as uh, machine learning, as well as the human moderation side, working for different platforms, as well as on the BPO space. It's exciting time and, uh, and, and, and love to be a part of this discussion. Thanks for joining. It's good to see you. We got to hang out in Dublin last month uh, in person, which was a lot of fun. We've got a background in general content moderation, but how do, how do the risks in the generative AI or the AI world, how do they compare? How are they different? What do you see that stands out? The difference that I see here is, you know, the gen AI as a product is, is still being evolved uh, compared mm -hmm. to the traditional content moderation uh, work where, uh, you know, there's user generated content out there. There is ground truth requirements validation uh, out there. But, uh, you know, in a gen AI, everyone is learning as they go. So the key fallouts here in terms of risks is what's my quality data in terms of training looking like? How strong are my adversarial testing policies in this space? How strong are my cohorts of people who are manually reviewing this type of content? And how do we stay differentiated and ahead of the game in, in terms mm -hmm. of managing a lot of the new product features that, that, that are getting almost launched by the day? There is a whole plethora of complexity, uh, content pollution, uh, user experience, regulatory environment, as well as policy testing uh, that's coming into existence as you know the gen AI role plays in the world. Where do we specifically fit in with that? Or, or, or maybe just any general outsourcer, right? When to leverage a partner like a task us or, or frankly, any of our competitors versus, uh, you know, a, a company managing in-house? Uh, are there inflection points in which they say, hey, maybe we should look at a partner? How do they think through that? Yeah, I think the, the whole difference that comes up in, in this space is uh, how well we are managing our cohorts of people who are reviewing this space. What are the governance mechanisms that we put in place while testing and training the data, right? So I'm going to touch upon the first area where Taskus has really got an amazing experience in this space. We have got years of experience in managing the right set of people who are reviewing the content. They come from a different group of uh, background. We have close to about 1,000 PhDs, uh, close to about 10,000 master's degree holders, biologists, medical experts, psychologists, economists, and even uh, content creator writers, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. reason, uh, you know, this diversity is important uh, is primarily because Gen AI needs elimination of bias, right? Mm -hmm. And bias can be in different form that can creep in while you are generating prompts as well as giving responses. So one really needs to come from a diverse set of group of cohort to understand what's the cultural nuance, geographical importance, and the type of content that is getting generated using these uh, you know, prompts. So that, that's the real differentiator in this space compared to a traditional content moderation BPO providing uh, services in this space. Second is obviously the adversarial testing. How mm -hmm. well do we predict? How well do we form strong groups to test, 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 right? And feed that back into the AI at the right time is going to be very, very critical, right? So uh, the key differences, and that's where Taskus is well positioned in the market is uh, the cohort and, and, and the diverse set of people who are reviewing this content, which really creates a learning feedback loop, effective mm -hmm. learning feedback loop, and in a timely and an efficient manner. Yeah, and and how does that work, right? You, you, we see things in the news about deep fakes and, and misinformation, that can instantly be generated with this new AI technologies. 
maybe take us through how do we how does a task us identify that address it feed that feed that back to the client so that it gets addressed and happens less frequently in 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 future iterations or future sessions from the consumers that are accessing the tools absolutely there are two ways to look at this right so uh the first and the most uh prominent area that that's there is you know the platforms have their own systems in place ai algorithms in place which detect and try to see if the content is good or bad and then they leverage tasks help in terms of uh you know trying to curate and manage the content depending upon the policies that's there the differentiator for us uh, i think the 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 new unique way that's emerging is you know housing all of these tools all of these algorithms and all of these policies at one place including the human reviewer right mm-hmm. uh, the benefit that you get when you house all of these at one place is one uh, the learning feedback gets faster uh, you mm-hmm. tend to uh, you know immediately pass on good bad content that has been reviewed categorized uh including the prompts and the responses back to the ai and mm-hmm. uh, the processes are not broken right so so that's one one method of uh, curating gen ai content the other method uh, is is as i spoke about which is more around adversarial testing and creating a cohort a group of people to identify misinformation fake news uh, imagery text detections and also creating a creating a, a repository of all of these bad content instances so that they can be referred back as and when you know the same content repeats in itself most of the world now has some access to a gen AI, gen ai platform what are the risks they should consider as they access a gen ai gen ai tool or platform from a security standpoint you bring in a very important uh, and and interesting topic brett uh, i was recently discussing this with uh, my father right and and we were chatting as to how most of the platforms today hold a billion people data their movements online how they how the the responses and uh, the prompts that uh, the users are seeing and feeding into these uh, platforms are are getting detected tracked monitored and you know reported back in various forms so there's lot of accountability and responsibility that also needs to be driven when you specifically handle such bad type of content right so there is definitely security risks involved uh, imagine you know a billion people data is is leaked yeah. for a bad purpose right so there is there is a huge repercussions that the world needs to face and it has got lot of lot of impact in terms of political social and even economic uh, you know uh, behaviors that that emerge right so uh, specifically you know the bunch of kids who are you know prompting responding uh, in a, in a gaming environment so there's every chance that there is there are deep fakes that are involved there is abuse there is revenge porn there is ip issues that that really come into picture right so and and there's a lot of content pollution that can happen in terms of scam and spams uh, that 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 needs to be controlled right so 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 in terms of security risk i would say compared to the traditional content moderation models which are much more matured in the in this space who have been dealing with such type of content for like over 10 to 15 years right now compared to the new age type of content that is getting generated needs much more attention much more faster response and much more uh you know efficient way of handling at an ai level right so so really the ai and the human combination doesn't go away it really uh, has to be asynchronous it really needs to come into a point where all of the policies all of the adversarial testing mechanisms needs to be clearly defined and every single content that is getting responded or prompted needs to be addressed at the grassroots level you know where we've come in the last say 15 years but with the advent of of frankly technology and high speed internet and mobility and then you layered in social media and all of a sudden we had problems right starting in the early 20 you know 2012 2013 and it's just gotten tougher and tougher since then but but when it comes to some of the challenges that maybe we're seeing in the social social media space from a content moderation and trust and safety i think of just like the political environment in the last couple of elections where that was never an exactly. issue 2004 yeah. 2008 or 2012 all of a sudden now it, it changed and you're making up policies that for the first time how how does how does this world with gen ai compare to that from your perspective and and knowing that we're still in the early stages of it i truly believe uh that I, you know um gen ai cannot probably replace or for that matter any algorithm can replace human paranoia and intention 
right mm-hmm. uh, that's that's where uh, you know the the differentiation between drawing the lines comes into picture between ai and and human and that's exactly where you know i'm going to touch upon a concept called alignment how do we align ai with human values and how can task us partner with our with with our clients to basically iterate the guidelines iterate continuously iterate the policies continuously look at the new type of content that is getting emerging that is getting emerged in this place right and how do we drive all those alignments right at the ai human and operations level and then again feed that back into the system right that right. is very very critical and and that process is only going to evolve but it's never going to be a space where 100% of the content will get automated and and and, and there would be no requirement for a human intervention right so so there would be always a content which gets undetected there would be mm-hmm. always a content which has gray area in it and and that's where uh, you know the ai and human value combination comes into picture yeah and when you talk about human value right as you mentioned with bias right whose human values is it the technology company that's building the gen ai tool uh is it our values is it the moderator's values um and and there's no real answer to that, right? It's yes to all of them, but it requires a holistic loop of continuous feedback to say, hey, is this still right? When it comes to you know supporting the frontline moderators or the humans, you know what, what are things that a company should consider um, when they're reviewing potentially harmful or egregious content or deep fakes or um, how do you support them in their own individual wellness? I think. The wellness in the Gen AI space assumes even more important, uh, primarily because the content is emerging. We do not know what kind of toxic content the individual moderator is exposed to. So right. I would primarily focus on deploying more uh, wellness at the initial phase as the content, as the met- as the processes get matured, probably we could look at a space where we could strike a balance between uh, wellness and other uh, you know, governance metrics that we want to drive for generating growth business. But in terms of where we where we really excel and where we could really do a, a good job and where, where we do really a good job is better training and in finding the vulnerabilities that are involved in the content. And basically vulnerabilities in the content in, in a Gen AI context, I mean, out of distribution data, right? Mm-hmm. Identifying the data points which do not align with the distributions from the actual content and the training data is very, very critical. And, and that's how uh, you know we we put a lot of our effort in training our folks in identifying these uh, you know vulnerabilities, right? And the last part is around contextualizing the policies for safer content. Typically, you know, how do we look at profanity? How do we define slurs? Uh, depending upon the context of a particular geography, a culture, right? And how do we create a repository of all of this profanity and slur words uh, and and also ensure that there is the right policy enforcement uh, uh, done at a, at, a, at a human as well as an AI level is going to be very, very critical. Yeah, to answer your question short, it's definitely going to be adversarial testing again, contextualizing right. the policies and ensuring that there is better training given to both the AI and the human. Yeah, and I should just for for some of the laymen, but adversarial testing. Maybe you can just share what that means. Yeah, so adversarial testing is basically you know you form a red team. Now, red team would be considering of different cohorts of folks who are policy specialists, um, you know, who come from a very critical, uh, resilient background, who manage undesired behavior, undesired identifying undesired bias, so identifying the content at the right time, right? So you basically test uh, the group test. Uh, this data in using different statistical measures, using different, uh, uh, you know, models uh, to come up with areas where uh, there is out of distribution data. So identify where there is vulnerability that actually should be plugged in the data. In simple words, if I'm prompting for a, a text image and the text image says uh, that, hey, can you please send me an image having uh, a, a child eating a detergent? Right. So if you look right. at in a traditional content moderation world, that could pass. But in a generative AI, it it, it will be more like a uh, like a toxic content because actually you're asking for a kid uh, to uh, you know promoting a kid to uh, you know basically send a response eating a detergent, and I'm going to give you a hundred points or hundred points uh, in a in a gaming right. kind of an environment. Right. So that's a very simple and a basic level example, but actually it has a lot of 
uh, you know, testing that needs to go into place because there is context, there is uh, there is this policy application, and there is this AI principle that really need to looked upon, right? And red teaming helps address that. We're coming up on time, but I want to just maybe just get your take on whether there's any other insights from your perspective that we want to share with our listeners before we uh, cut out and get back to work. Driving uh, this whole uh, work responsibly, uh, ethically, and uh, ensuring that the people first culture is absolutely taken care of. So I think these are the areas where uh, you know we would love to partner with a lot of, lot of the companies who are building their product. And I think we are really well positioned in this space. So uh, uh, fun stuff. We'll, we'll have more of these conversations. It's always fun to see you. Um, hopefully you, you've uh, settled back in after your, your weeks of travel. And um, uh, uh, I will talk to you soon. You can find us at www.taskus.com. You can follow us on social media with LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This is Brett Ransom. I'm signing out. You all have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.